I'm Andy Glover and I am the team leader of HBC Chester. We are a Baptist church based up in the northwest of England and for the last seven years we've been transitioning and focusing in on how we might become a church that has a really strong discipleship culture and particularly uses um, the two vehicles, uh, the vehicle of missional communities and huddles. And so I want to talk to you a little bit today about coaching huddles. I also have the privilege of being the team leader of Fresh Streams. And within the context of Fresh Streams, one of the things that I've begun to do in the last couple of years is to offer these coaching huddles to senior leaders um, or those who are ministers or assistant leaders in their church as an opportunity to see how they too could begin to grow personally as a disciple, but also to implement some of the tools, some of the rhythms, some of the principles that we've learned at HBC Chester that would help them create a strong discipleship culture and a context where their congregation members are making disciples that make disciples. My experience of being in a coaching huddle has been one of the real highlights of the last seven years. And a coaching huddle is a powerful tool and something that I really believe now is essential for discipleship and leadership development. I've had the privilege of being in a coaching huddles that have been led by Paul McConaughey, uh, Rich Robinson, and more latterly with Nick Harding. And at HBC, they've become one of those vehicles that we use to help grow our pipeline of leaders. Now, a coaching huddle usually lasts about an hour and they can take place maybe weekly, fortnightly or sometimes monthly. In the context that I've been involved in within HBC, we find that our coaching huddles best run on a monthly rhythm and so we use that second for us the second Wednesday of every month um, on, a, on an evening we will we'll gather together for our coaching huddle. Now in HBC uh, we call these uh, coaching huddles um, something else actually what you call them isn't that important uh, the principles are what we are so uh, focused on so at HBC, we call these iPods, uh, intentional places of discipleship. And so the way that it works at HBC, just to give you a little bit of, of insight, is um, I lead an iPod with some of the um, leaders in my church. Um, we do that once a month. Um, we go through the, the con context uh, and content of the material and then the Four people who are in that huddle, they then go and lead uh, a coaching huddle for themselves, an iPod for themselves, and I also then lead another iPod. So we've been doing this now, like I say, for the, particularly the last five years, and it's become a really effective tool to really help that discipleship and that growth in individuals. In terms of the tools that we use, um, we, we've drawn heavily upon the, the tools that come out of the 3DM stable, uh, Mike Breen, uh, particularly uh, some of his uh, material from his book, um, Creating a Discipleship Culture. Um, so we use some of those life shapes, um, although again, uh, it's the principles that we talk about the most. So we will talk about the uh, your up, in and out, those three dimensions of your discipleship life uh, and we use the triangle just as a way of remembering um, our up life our in life and our out life and the other particular shape that we talk a lot about is the circle and that's because for me uh, the the discipleship question or the two discipleship questions that form the basis of a coaching huddle are what is God saying to you and then what am I doing about it and so the learning circle provides a framework where 
we, we work around that circle. In the first half of the circle, we're asking the question, what is God saying to me? And we observe a, a sort of Kairos moment. We discuss it. We reflect on it. And then as we go around the circle, we begin to think about, well, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to respond to what God is saying? And we begin to, uh, to plan uh, and then we, we act and then we're accountable to what we feel God has said to us. So like I say, the huddle uh, will last uh, around about an hour. And so in that hour, we are looking to, to look at three specific areas. We look at what we call the three C's of a huddle, these rhythms that we go through. And we won't do this every week, but over a period of time, we'll make sure that we've touched upon these three C's. The first C is character. How is God developing me as a person, as a disciple and as a leader? Secondly, we look at competencies. We talk there about how is God developing my leadership skills? An understanding of how I'm building principles into my own life and into the life of the church or organisation that I lead. And then finally, we talk about our context. How am I applying what God is teaching me, what God is saying to me, to the challenges in my current context? And for me, the context thing has been really important because um, I've been a church leader now for over 25 years and I know that there isn't really any one silver bullet that is going to cause my church to grow or my church to become healthy. Um, there's not one program that I just need to find and once I find that program, um, everything will begin to change. Um, my context is so different from anybody else's context. And so those principles of around character and competency are what we seek to apply into our context. For me, a really simple definition of, of a disciple, what is a disciple? Is someone who is learning to be like Jesus, i.e. in their character. How are we uh, working out our, sort of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in me? producing the fruit of the Spirit in my own life. And then secondly, my competencies. Um, how am I learning to do what Jesus did? How am I growing in uh, my ability to hear God's voice? Um, how am I developing my, my prayer ministry? How am I developing uh, my, my ability to pray for people um, who are looking for God to heal them? How, how, how am I becoming more effective in that and so as i go through these tools i'm looking to see that growth in my own life so when we have the coaching huddle what happens is we divide the hour up into sort of different segments and what usually happens is the first part of the huddle or the ipod is we will have some updates we'll catch up uh, we'll hear some news um, hopefully a, a good news story will be in that moment, something that God has been doing. Uh, and we'll get some feedback on uh, the accountability question. How did we do since the last huddle? What, what did we implement? How did we begin to process more what God was saying? Then we, we have some input. Um, this is where, I guess, as the, as the facilitator, it's my role to bring some input. And so I will um, use a tool or, or we'll look at a theme, or we'll look at an issue, and we'll begin to unpack that, talk about it. And into that, we begin to sort of process together the, the learning circle. We observe, we um, discuss, we reflect together. And, and underneath that is that question, what is God saying to me as we talk together in this moment? And so um, what we're looking to do is then come out of that time of input and, and, and share together, talk together. And so I'm, I'm looking for uh, those sort of a moment, a sort of like where we can, it's like a catalyst moment where God is speaking as a Kairos moment, that, that somebody might begin to hear God say something to them and observe something that's going on in their own lives. And so we're, we're sort of processing that and I'm facilitating the conversation and helping people to apply what that principle might be. 
So for example, we might be talking for example, you know, about let's have a let's talk about vision and the importance of having a clear vision. And so we'll define what we mean by vision. We'll we'll talk about examples of what vision looks like, maybe in our church or in your church, the person's church who's on the huddle, or maybe in your missional community. And we'll stimulate that conversation and help clarify our vision, motivate our members to um, to accelerate that development of vision in their own life and in their own context. What we're looking for are principles that we can apply. So my job is to facilitate that discussion. And so I, over the last few months, um, particularly in this COVID-19 context, where I think that the issue around discipleship has been amplified I think the role of me as a, as a leader, as a minister in a church, is to coach my people, is to give them tools, to give them um, the rhythms of life, to talk about what it is that sustains us in our own discipleship. And so to coach senior leaders is to give me a, a, an opportunity to help them as they seek to work out in their context, what does a discipleship culture look like for you? What are the tools that will best serve you? Um, What are the rhythms of life on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis that will help sustain ministry? And how then can we implement some of that into our church so that our churches are places where people are becoming disciples, where they're maturing as disciples, And so what we're seeking to do is to raise up and release missionary disciples, people who are living missionally in their everyday lives. So the coaching huddle is really important to land itself around this question, or these two questions. What is God saying to you? And what are you doing about it? They're really the two discipleship questions that are at the heart of a coaching huddle. And so what I've tended to do in, our, in this sort of framework of the hours is we land the, the sort of final 10, 15 minutes of the coaching huddle. Uh, we're looking for that question like, uh, what is God saying to you? Um, what are you going to take away from this conversation? Uh, a good question that I sometimes ask is, what question would you like me to ask? the next time we meet in a huddle. Um, that, that accountability is, is really important. And it's an accountability that is around low control. Uh, I'm not telling you what to do, but what I'm hoping to do is to facilitate a conversation, a discussion in the coaching huddle that will help you begin to hear what God is saying to you and then for you to process that, work that through on your own with your leadership team, and into the church or ministry opportunity that you have and the context that you're in. I found just that simple accountability, knowing that uh, once a month or once a fortnight, I'm meeting again with the same group of people and we start that conversation with, hey, how did you get on with that accountability question? Um, And me as a facilitator, what I tend to do is I make a note of uh, of all those sort of answers you know what are people saying and we begin the next huddle just going through that what what has been going on Um, and sometimes that will lead into a deeper conversation because somebody's really uh, taken some time and processed it and begun to see God um, change a, a situation or begin to work in a different way or sometimes nothing's happened because life's taken over and and so we just reflect on that we we continually say that there's no shame there's no guilt uh, we're in this together. Uh, we're encouraging one another. Um, you know, we pray for one another in a coaching huddle. We prophesy over one another. And as 1 Corinthians 14, 3 reminds us, uh, prophecy is about encouraging, strengthening and comforting. And so I've, I've really found the coaching huddle as a place where I've, I've experienced that. Some of the values that underpin uh, the huddles are friendship. There's obviously confidentiality. There's an honesty and vulnerability that comes out. I found it uh, quite quite humbling at times how vulnerable people are, particularly when we use Zoom. And and we've all become much more familiar with Zoom. 
uh, as a platform over these last nine months. And, and we use Zoom, particularly for the Fresh Dreams coaching huddles. Obviously, in the church context, we would meet in person. But actually, over these last few months, we've, we've used Zoom for all of our iPods. And they've continued on a monthly basis during this last nine months of 2020. One of the things that I encourage people when I invite them into a, a huddle is it's it's a place where you have a privilege of being uh, discipled by me. Now, that I don't say that in a proud way, um, but I, I want to invest in people. So within my own church, people get invited into a iPod. Uh, we don't just put that out as a general invitation. We generally invite people in. Uh, particularly those who are carrying some leadership responsibility, either a missional community leader, uh, they could be a youth and children's leader, they could be a worship leader. Um, so you get invited in where there's going to be specific investment into your life. And so what we're looking for are these two qualities. We're looking for people who have that sense of availability, they're willing to prioritise the time uh, when the huddle takes place or when that iPod takes place. And we're looking for those people who are accountable, that they're willing to learn and to take hold of the teaching and the principles and put them into practice. So, as I say, I've been in a coaching huddle over these last few years and the ones that I've been in have been so helpful where once a fortnight I've planned my diary so that I am available. It's a priority for me to be in the coaching huddle. I've turned up, I've listened, I've learned, I've heard God speak to me, I've applied that back into my own life and into the life of my church. And I can honestly say that the coaching huddle has become such a significant part of my ministry, both in terms of what I've received and now, hopefully, in the way that I'm facilitating coaching huddles and investing in other leaders. So I want to invite you to think about jumping into the, the conversation on Zoom a little bit later today and to come and be a part of that conversation. Or if you're watching it at a later time, then drop me an email if you want to know more about coaching huddles. Just that opportunity to be invested in, that opportunity to ask the question, what is God saying to me and then what am I doing about it? And to grow in your character, to grow in your competency and to apply that into your context. That is what a coaching huddle is all about. Thanks so much for, um, for joining this particular seminar. And um, as we go through, uh, do feel free to just pop a question into the chat if that is appropriate, and we'll make sure um, I make sure there's some time um, to do some Q&A, particularly towards the end. And also, we'll have a bit of time just to pray with and for one another as well. Um, just just to be clear, has everybody actually watched the video um, recording? If, if so, that obviously that's just useful to do. If you if you hadn't, then it, it'll still be sat there um, for the whole conference. So you can you can dip into it afterwards, and that obviously gives you a little bit of an overview of uh, of coaching huddles. Um, just just a little quote. I, I actually read this. Um, this week, it was um, on Twitter. It was from uh, um, an American pastor, actually. Uh, he just wrote this. He said, in the future, churches that equip Christians will eclipse churches that gather them. Um, churches that equip Christians will eclipse churches that gather them. Um, I'm not particularly sure it's an, an either or. I think it's an and both. So, you know, don't, don't hear me the fact that we don't we do need to gather. And, um, and obviously at the moment um, we're not and, and we're all missing that sort of in-person aspect of our gatherings. But I guess um, for me, part of the journey that we've been on in, in the church that I lead, particularly for the last seven years, um, was that sort of realisation that we'd become very Sunday-centric in the way that we did church. And, and as the minister of that church and and a reasonably sort of mid-sized church. We're about 300 adults and kids um, all together. So um, a lot of my time as the sort of team leader uh, was spent on just that cycle of getting ready for the next Sunday. Um, and, 
as alongside that um, was also uh, most of my time was spent um, a little bit like Graham was saying, um, being the sort of chief exec of this organization that was very busy, very program driven, um, did a lot of good stuff, don't get me wrong, and, and you know, had a measure of success and fruitfulness. But actually, with for me as a church leader, I'd, I'd really lost that um, environment where I was discipling people myself. And so for us, um, we, we embarked on this journey, which I, I mentioned a little bit in the, in the video, which was um, to really explore what it would look like to create a, a discipleship culture for us as a church. And, um, and that is the sort of the vision, I guess, behind uh, the use of, of huddles um, is, is how we make disciples that make disciples. And so we, um, we adopted this um, vehicle, this particular structure of huddle, alongside um, introducing in our church missional communities. So uh, we transitioned the church over a seven year period, uh, beginning in 2013, 14, to where we are now. And um, we have uh, both coaching huddles. Uh, we, we call them something else, actually, in terms of our context. Uh, it was one of the decisions we took that the, for us, uh, the word huddle wasn't particularly a word that we were that comfortable with. Um, so we, we went with, uh, in our own context, we call them iPods which are intentional places of discipleship. Um, so they, they really focus in on, on our vision and it, it creates an environment uh, for me and for us as leaders in our church to actually um, spend time talking about discipleship issues with particularly members of our leadership team and our wider leadership team. Um, you'll, you'll remember from the video, um, for, for me, the the, the the, con the three C's of a, of a huddle are really important because they really focus into what it means to, um, to make disciples. So um, we, we define in our context what a disciple is as somebody who is learning to be like Jesus and learning to do what Jesus could do. And, and that really reflects these, the first two C's, which is character and competency. And so what, what we um, introduced was this environment. So at its essence, a, a, an iPod, a huddle, is, is a small group um, where people are gathered by invitation only. Um, and so the way that we began to roll this out in our church was that um, I offered this as um, an extra evening in our timetable with our, with our leadership team. So in HBC, uh, we have a leadership team which um, are basically the trustees of the church. Um, there's seven of us, including myself. And we would usually have a rhythm where we would meet once a month um, on a Monday evening to do, sort of meet as a leadership team to do the business of the church, if you know what I mean? So we'd have an agenda, we'd work through that agenda, we'd do the planning and we'd do some of the trustee stuff, the finance stuff. And we um, introduced into our rhythms a second evening. So, so once a month, um, two weeks after the leadership meeting, we set up uh, our very first iPod back in 2014. And what we said to the leadership team was, this was an opportunity where I, as the team leader, would invest in them around the issue of discipleship. And we would create an environment where we shared information, but we also had an opportunity to develop imitation, where we could share a little bit of life together as a leadership team and it, it created an environment for us where we began to shift a little bit away from just being colleagues leading a church that were very focused on the leading of this organization to an environment where we were talking about our, our spiritual rhythms the tools of discipleship 
how we were growing, where we were growing. And so that that became a place where we, we banned talking about church and we just talked about discipleship and being disciples. And we made a very clear distinction that we, you know, the, the Monday night when we met as a leadership team, that was about church and about planning and all that sort of stuff. But when we met in an iPod, that was about our discipleship. That was that was to have conversations around um, the up, what we call the up, in and out, um, our up relationship, our and, and our, sh our our sort of shared um, relationship with God in terms of our in relationship and how we're walking together, and then also our out. Um, how were we doing in terms of, of reaching beyond ourselves uh, and talking to our friends, neighbours, family about the love of Jesus? So the framework of up, in and out is, is very much um, a, about the context that we find ourselves in. Now, in, in, a, in a coaching huddle, um, that is the third C because um, we recognise very clearly that everybody's context is different. And, and I think as a church leader, uh, one of my reflections is that sometimes we can take a, a, a sort of a program off the shelf and, and think that will be the answer to the issues that are going on in our church. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with programs or courses, but we have to find a way of interpreting that into the context that we are in. So within an iPod, within a, a huddle, um, we specifically talk about the context. Now, there's two aspects that go on in terms of, of the coaching huddle. For me, as a church leader within the context of Fresh Dreams, I offer coaching huddles to other church leaders. Um, they, and primarily that tends to be those who are the minister of the church or an associate minister of a church. Um, that generally is the people that I tend to invest in and run coaching huddles with. And I find at a personal level that being in one um, really helps me then in the way that I then lead one, if that makes sense. So I'm experiencing being in a huddle. So me personally, I'm actually in a, a huddle in the context of an organization called Kairos Connection. Um, you'll see in the program that there's a guy called Nick Harding who is doing one of these Digging Deeper. He's talking about that organization, that they're an organization that Fresh Dreams partners with who have a specific focus on raising up and releasing missional disciples and missional leaders. So um, I, I make time and energy to be in that. And then I also run coaching huddles across the Fresh Dreams Network and offer those out to church leaders. Um, and then also in my own church, um, I run a, a coach, a, a, I'll call it an iPod in my own church, which is a coaching huddle uh, for my leadership team. And then four of that leadership team run huddles for other leaders in our church. So what we're trying to do is, is what we call first generation and second generation huddles. Um, and, and generally what, what we do in sort of setting these up is uh, we have a ratio of, of one to six. Um, I think most people can cope quite well with a ratio of one to six. It also gives people the context to share together and have some interaction. If you get like, even on this number, there's 13 of us on this. Actually, for everybody to talk, everybody to share, to do that within an hour gets very difficult. Um, but one to six, generally, you can get everybody to participate. You can draw people in. Um, the coaching huddles that I run for Fresh Dreams, I do on Zoom. Um, the ones that we do in our church are all on Zoom right now, like everything else is. We would obviously do them in person um, as and when we can. But we've during the lockdown period, that's one of the things that we just moved online as a church. And so the pattern of, of um, the rhythm of our iPods are monthly in our church. Um, and we have them all on the same night on the same week. So the second week of our rhythms as a church on the Wednesday night, we run our iPods. That's the only thing that takes place uh, midweek in our church on that evening. The coaching huddles that I do within Fresh Dreams, um, they, they are once a fortnight. Um, so they tend to have a little bit more of a rhythm because 
Um, again, in terms of investment and availability, um, I think the fortnightly rhythm works better for, for, for church leaders and for a daytime iPod. What we found in our context was that for people in our church who are working, have full-time jobs, and also then serving the church in a leadership context, a monthly rhythm was what worked best, particularly because they're involved in other leadership meetings, um, whether that's the senior leadership team or the youth children's worship, wherever it might be. Um, in our church context, what happens is that I lead a huddle with the leaders and I introduce the material and we have a, a, a termly a curriculum that we use and then they roll that out to the to their huddle so we we follow through the same material um, and again um, we we have used different levels of material depending on where when we first started um, we we particularly focused in on the 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 life shape questions that i mentioned in the in the recording which is the triangle which is the up, in and out. And one of the most simple things that uh, we did um, with people with, was that, and this is a little bit of an aside, but if you're gonna create culture in a church, one of the things that you have to introduce is a shared language. Language helps to create culture. And so within our church, the language of up, in and out over the seven years that we've been using it has become a, a language that we all understand. So. If I run a, an iPod with a group of leaders and I say to them, um, on a scale of one to 10, where would you mark yourself in terms of your up relationship with God right now? And you can't use five, where would you put yourself? And, it, and, it, and that immediately opens up a conversation then about how we're doing in our up relationship. And that is to do with our, our prayer life, our reading of the scriptures, um, that sort of sense of connectivity to God. And we have a whole number of questions that we use, um, which again, if, if people are interested, I can send you more information and I'll, I'll put my details into the chat in a few minutes and, and you're very welcome to email me and I'll, I'll send you any material that you might want. Um, I'm very happy to send that because we, we use loads of questions that will help people begin to work out their up and then we do the similar around their out their in um so how are you doing with your in how how are you are you feeling connected to another group of christians in your church in the church uh, do you feel like um, you belong there's a whole load of questions we use and, and we we unpack that together and then the similar with the out and then into that what we're looking for is the question of discipleship for us is what is god saying to you and then what are you doing about it and so what we're, we're sort of pointing people to that question, and if I was to run a, an iPod or a huddle, I generally spend the last 10 minutes of that huddle asking that question of people and then asking them to reflect back to me, what is it that you want to take away from this iPod, this huddle, that, that I will ask you a question about next time we meet. So one of our values is... Um, high accountability but low control so the the accountability is simply you feel god might be saying something to you in the context of this huddle tell me what you think that is and then i will ask you a question about what you think god might be saying to you it it, it for me and all of my experience of being in a huddle over these last seven years that that level of accountability is what I found the most helpful. Um, and it's that sort of continual decisions to make, to keep following Jesus, to keep following through week in, week out, month in, month out. I then look back over a 12 month period and I see that I've actually grown and developed in that area. And just having somebody a couple of weeks later or a month later ask me the question just keeps me a bit more focused and a little bit more intentional. I think we all know how easy it is to lose focus, uh, particularly in busy lives. Um, and for me, one of the keys for discipleship is trying to be much more intentional in the way that we live out our lives and the way that we're following through. Um, so 
The huddle itself generally lasts about an hour and um, we're pretty strict on that in terms of, you know, when we meet in our church context. Um, I'm always conscious, you know, particularly on Zoom, you know, just think about the last eight, nine, nine, ten months, people are getting a little bit zoomed out. But we, we say we meet from eight till nine. Well, we do the, the iPod. Um, we process the information. So there's a bit of content teaching by whoever's facilitating. And then there's some discussion. There's that drawing around what do you feel God might be saying to you at the moment? And then reflecting on that together as an accountability at the end. And then what we generally do in the last 10 minutes is pray with one another. And, and sometimes we'll prophesy and, and we'll just home in on one or two people that, that during the, the, the conversation, there's just been something highlighted. And generally my role is the, is the, the person facilitating is to sort of lead that quite strongly. I guess one of the things I'd say about an iPod is, is, is that the people in it have been invited into that context to be discipled by the person leading it. So there's, there's quite a strong emphasis of leadership in it, that you, you are inviting people in to share a little bit of your life, your context. And so you are facilitating and leading. At the same time, there's an attitude of, of actually... We need to hear from one another. There's a lot of learning in the room. Um, and, and so in the early days, we were quite fixed on the timetable and the content because it was new uh, and we were getting familiar with it. But generally, as we've got into this now, particularly in our church and the, the five, is it five, the four individuals who lead their iPods, they have a bit of a freedom to sort of lead it as they feel um, reflects a bit of their personality as long as they follow the content. Um, and we'll reflect on that together when we meet an iPod then once a month. A lot of information. I'll stop there because I've, I've been speaking for about 15 minutes and that's probably enough. Um, I, I guess, my, you know, the best thing probably is just to open up for a bit of a, you know, any questions, any reflections. Um, one of the things I will say, if people are particularly interested in being in one, one of the things I, I would offer out of this is a sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, like just, just to offer a, a, a go, a huddle. I'd invite you into something that we could just do a, a trial huddle together. Um, we'd know, uh, and I guess I'm thinking that particularly if anybody is in like a church leadership role um, for me to, to huddle. I, I run three huddles a, um, once a fortnight. For, for fresh dreams and there are spaces in some of those huddles if, if particularly for church leaders to come into um, and they will start um, in the next week or so um, but again we could have a conversation offline about that if anybody was particularly interested I think in a local church context I would say that it's really been the the primary vehicle to help us establish that discipleship culture with our leaders as a church um, I think it was Jane you were talking about the 10,000 fathers uh, and the way that they use coaching huddles our worship leader at HBC he did that two years ago as well and um, connected in with the so there was a lot of overlap with what he was doing uh, in our worship context um, and, and it has become a really good vehicle for, for having a small group of people that you invest in for a season. And we, we do it seasonally. We do it um, nine months. You commit and then we refresh it uh, as well. So you don't stay in the same group um, for your whole life, as it were. You know, we, we stop and, and review. Um, and we've, we've just done that within the context of HBC. Within the context of Fresh Dreams, I normally ask people to commit to a term um, and then we go on from there afterwards. Um, but we want it to be long enough um, to make it worthwhile in terms of that investment. Um, I just see that, Jane, you you were, that was quite a high intensity, wasn't it? A weekly huddle um, is quite a high investment. Um, but, but again, it, it, it's one of those things where you get out of it what you put in a little bit. So... Um, 
obviously if it's monthly and you miss one there can be a quite a big gap of what you've missed but if you're doing it fortnightly at least you miss one monthly you can jump back in anyway i'll open up any questions one also to include accountability say again yeah it's also accountability and a lot more than just a huddle but it's yeah. uh, great to be part of a group yeah i just open up anybody want to reflect ask a question Andy, can I, can I start with a question? Um, when, you, when you started this with your church, am I right in understanding you started with your leadership team and, and then it, it spread out from there? Yeah. And would that be your advice on, on a good way of rolling this out in a church? I, I think so. I think, you know, inevitably you want your, your wider leadership team to sort of really see the importance of it and engage with it. Obviously, if you are the, the team leader or, or one of the ministers, you've got a little bit of influence there to sort of direct it. Um, we did it just for the leadership team for 12 months um, because we were trying, this is all about our transition time. So we just introduced it with the leadership team um, and we did it for 12 months, once a month. We didn't do it in August and we didn't do it in December. So we just did it for 10 months. Um, again, just trying to recognize the calendar and the rhythms of church, uh, and people's availability, um, and, and, and really got them on board. Because what, what you're really looking for is, is that rollout program where eventually um, more and more of your leaders, particularly. So this is primarily for us at the moment, still is. It's for our leaders in our church. Mm -hmm. So for us, all our missional community leaders are in a huddle all our worship leaders are in a huddle all our children's and youth leaders are in a huddle all our life support pastoral team are in a huddle so we've got um 48 leaders in five different huddles um averaging between myself and my wife sue we we lead the largest we've got a ratio of one to ten which is probably a little bit high but some of that is about again the challenge of, of getting people confident enough to lead their own huddle um, and that that's taken a little bit of time and, and continues to do so but um, what we'd really like to do is is to roll out maybe another two or three new huddles as second generation but even a couple of our leadership team members who've been in huddles now for four years still feel quite reluctant to lead their own huddle they don't feel confident to do it um, even though we keep encouraging that they, they can but I appreciate they, they need to go on that journey. So yes, my short answer would be, I think to go with the leadership team is, is crucial if you're going to roll it out as a, a particularly for your leaders um, to use. Thank you. Do you have, um, do you have all your uh, children and youth leaders in the same huddle and your worship leaders in another huddle together? Or you, you have multidisciplinary huddles? Yeah, we, we, we've tended to mix it up just, just, it's been a bit mixed. We tried it with our missional community core teams to be in the same huddle. Um, so sometimes we'll keep those groups together. Um, but to be fair, we try and mix it up a bit. We, we trial and error. We, we, we have tried it with everybody from the same ministry team being in the same huddle. Um, and then right now we, we have got a real mix of, of different people. Some of that is to to give people the context of meeting people that they wouldn't normally meet with as well because of how we work as a church and because of the size of church um we felt that would be quite a good way of, of sort of cross-pollinating some of the discipleship culture by drawing people together would you say it's always good for your facilitators to be in a huddle themselves do you think that's good practice or is it something you insist upon or um we personally insist on it mm. um, just just because of integrity and context. It, it, if yeah. you're not in one, I think I think the question of accountability is a really interesting one for a huddle. It, it's probably the thing that makes the huddle different than any other small group I've ever been in, is that you are accountable back to the huddle in terms of that's where we end a huddle and that's where we begin the huddle. Mm. So if you're not in one, it's like, well, how much do you really value then the, the context yeah. of what you're trying to do in terms of yeah. accountability? Makes sense. Andy, um, 
I think live streams was introduced to me through mainstream fresh streams years and years ago. Yeah. Brought all the books, the leaders' books, the house group books, everything. My mistake with it, I discovered was I went through eight life shapes really quickly. Yeah. And then when I came back to the following year mainstream, I think you must have had one of the groups, uh, one of the guys from the group speak two years running. And he said, oh, it took us two years to get through one of the shapes. And I thought, well, it took me a session. They didn't understand it. And I went on to another shape. So how do you explain from the get-go? It would have been really helpful from the get-go that years ago for me to understand that a shape, like the triangle, for instance, yeah. is a shape you live with for a long time. How yeah. do you keep that fresh? How do you not always ask the same question in your huddle? How have you maintained it for four years? Yeah, and I think I think that's that's a great reflection on on the whole journey of the material first came out from a guy called Mike Breen, mm. um, who was leading a church in Sheffield at the time, and it's one of the I remember talking to Mike in a context around the Fresh Dreams conversation where it became a little bit program driven like everything else. It was like you just talk about the shapes. Um, in an eight week session and then you've done the life shapes and, and it isn't that way. Basically the way that I, I see it is it's almost becomes like an operation operating system that you live your life through. So like you need an operating system to be on a computer, whether that's windows, um, you need something to shape your life and build your life around. So the up in and out, um, the way we keep that fresh is, is yeah, basically we have 20 questions that we ask for each area. So there's about 20 questions for your up, there's about 20 questions for your in, 20 questions for your out. And then we, we mix and match those questions at different times. We'll home in sometimes on the up and and out, but we sometimes won't talk about that for maybe three months and we're really focusing on the prophetic. You know, what is God saying to you? And we'll then do a whole teaching series on the prophetic. How do you hear God? How do you understand what he's saying? Um, how do you grow in confidence and all that? Um, so, yeah, it, to me, it's really important that the, sh the life shape material, actually, the shapes themselves are visual reminders of important principles. Um, and, and we've only, we, we've been doing this for seven years. We've only talked about... Um, May, we've really focused in on three of the sort of shapes, the triangle, the circle, and the square. Um, we talk a little bit about the semicircle. Now, that you may not be aware of any of this, so don't worry about it if you've not. Um, but they, they're the principles around the up in and out. What is God saying to you? What are you doing about it? The process of leadership, which is um, I do, you watch. I do, you do, and we do it together. You do it, I watch, and then you go and do it. So there's a bit of a process of getting people to get going. And then we also talk a lot about rhythms in our church, the rhythms of discipleship. And that's that's one of the things I, I in my coaching huddles, I've got material around rhythms and tools, which I think are really important right now. Um, how do we keep ourselves sustained in this moment when, um, particularly right now, it feels very intense. We need to make sure we have good boundaries. We have days off. Um, we have Sabbath time. All those sort of rhythms are really important. So the, the semicircle, which is all about rhythms, is, is being talked about a little bit more in our church, but only for those that find helpful. It's the principle of rhythm that's more important. That makes sense. Thanks, Andy. I think it would have been helpful for me years ago to realise it took a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, and it would have been more useful because then the church could have learned the language properly. Yeah. Instead of me just taking something off the shelf, trying to batter it out, yeah. and then wondering why nobody could follow it. So we just just to give you a bit of an idea, we we introduced in 2013 as a as a church leadership team the principles of discipleship culture starting to introduce this language in 2013. It was 2015 when we first introduced missional communities. And um, 
we're now in what two thousand. So we were, we took us two to four years inclusive before we actually changed the structure. We didn't change any structures in our church with it until after four years of you know inclusive of 13, 14, 15, and and then into sixteen. Really, it was it was like October fifteen when we introduced missional community. So we took our time and went quite slowly because it was about changing culture. And, and you know, I don't know, you know, what you feel about that. But for me, the shifting of culture always takes longer. And, and actually, as the quote goes, culture always eats strategy for breakfast. Um, so if, if you've got a, a wrong culture in your church, which again is why, for me, it's really important to try and engage with our leaders, because leaders are the ones who can set culture. If I could go back and find the younger me and tell me anything, it would be along those lines. Because I think, I think we're all we get churned out of theological college, and the idea is you go and do your preaching series, and you've done it, and tick, we've done it, and and actually, that cultural change just takes years and years. So yeah, yeah thank you for that. Um, I think the question I would have is my experience of leading a number of churches. I can imagine if I was to go to the church and say we're going to do this. And even in the EBA, you'd say, if I'm going to do this, the question would be, is that, does that, oh, he's gone. Look at that, I've upset him. No, I don't, the lights are not really gone. The, the question would be, um, does that not just show favouritism? Um, you know, so if you're saying to these six people, you're in my huddle. Um, and so what, what would you say to your to deacons who are saying, oh, we like the idea of this, but we don't want to play, we don't play favourites in our church? Yeah, yeah we, we had we had the same conversation to be honest and and at the end of the day, in terms of my leadership team my, my expectation was that everybody who was an elder or a deacon that context would be in a huddle yeah. there'd be that expectation that you would be um, I think what we tended to do then was we, we tended to look at Jesus's model of discipleship and 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 so Jesus had this this model didn't he that it seems to me that he spent time with the 70. Uh, he spent time with the 12, he spent time with the three. And Jesus seemed to have that ability to, to invite some people closer in and not let other people feel like they were being left out. Um, so we, we used it, and again, in terms of the culture of saying, actually, this is a privilege to be in this. Um, and we also talked about with our wider leadership team in the early days that this is something we we're going to be rolling out. So... So we built up a bit of an appetite and, a, and, and we, we sort of, not, not in a bad way, we didn't put like a positive spin on it, but we talked about some of the stories of what God was doing in the iPod so that other leaders began to get a bit of an appetite for it. And we, we have a, a, again, it's not 100% because it never is, but our desire is that if, you, if you're in a leadership role in our church, um, you'll be invited into an iPod. Um, and so it's very much linked to leaders. Um, now, what we've said to our missional communities particularly is that in their rhythms of life, some of those do small groups, and we encourage them to use some of the same material in their small groups. So it becomes almost like a huddle, but it's not as structured. Um, but they are, it, it's, about, it's about that environment, isn't it, to have those conversations about spiritual growth and spiritual life and discipleship questions which we don't really have very often um, in church life we tend like we, we we had a massive conversation about the use of bible study for example in this world um, because we we had a traditional life group model midweek program of of bible study um, and, and really, we scrapped that and moved away from Bible study and, and introduced language like Bible application. Uh, how do we apply the Bible into our lives as opposed to just studying the Bible in our lives? So it just takes time for us. It was like a, a drip feed over that four-year period. Um, and if people started to really have an appetite to be in an iPod, we encourage the leaders to invite that person in. So one of one of my leaders is mentoring a, a young adult. Um, and, and we were just saying, I just said to him, look, if you really want to invest and invite them into your huddle, 
it's because it's your environment where you're sharing life. Um, so yeah, it, it takes time. It's drip feed. Um, it's 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 being open about the fact that it it's you know you're inviting people in a little bit like Jesus did to come closer into your life. And Jesus had that sort of three three twelve seventy rhythm. Um, he couldn't do with all of them, but with some he could spend a little bit more time. So it helped us. It, it's yeah. There's a few people who had like that same question that you you raised, but we just processed it with them and talked it through. And it, in the end, it worked out okay for us on, on the whole. And one more quick question: uh, What's the thinking behind the hour? Because that that sounds quite quite a lot to cram into an hour. I, yeah, I think if if you're in person, if you're doing it in your your church, you know, you're meeting in a living room, you probably can go a bit longer because. We would, you know, we'd have tea and coffee and have a bit of catch up time. So it'd probably be, to be honest, probably an hour and a half all in. Um, it's more the hour on Zoom. So we just really focus and, and keep it to that one hour um, just because of the dynamics, as you know, of being online. But if we're in person, yeah, we probably spend the first 15 minutes tea and coffee, catch up, how you doing? And then the next sort of hour, um, and then maybe, yeah, it sometimes will flip over if we're praying for people particularly. Um, but again, we wanted people to know a start time and an end time so they know what they're committing to. That was the, that was the sort of secret to it. And do you, your content, do you actually do Bible study or is it, did you have some sort of specific thing that you're going through? Yeah, we don't, we don't necessarily do bible study but we would we'll have it's more thematic i would say so right uh, so for example one of the materials that we use which isn't ours but we use it from the what's the network called 3dm um which is the paul okay. donarchy mike green american base there's a guy called bob roglian um who's written a couple of books One's called Empowering Missional Disciples. Um, and then he has a, a book that goes alongside that called The Jesus Shaped Life. Um, those would be the two books I would re recommend most, to be honest. If you were to buy anything, I'd buy those two books. Empowered Missional Discipleship or Empowering Missional Discipleship and The Jesus Shaped Life. And what Bob has done is he's written two curriculums for a year program of huddles based on those two books wow um and he's made them free to share so if again that that the jesus shaped life is a really simple book that is more for your sort of everyday member of your church the empowered missional disciple is much more for those who are facilitating the ipod or the huddle and it goes into a little bit more depth um, and what's so powerful about the books is that they, they really focus on how Jesus did ministry. Uh, and you draw out the Jesus principles of particularly the up in and out aspects of Jesus's life. Um, and and it, yeah, the material is great because, like I say, it's, it's a it's a 12 month curriculum just there for you, really. Um, and you just basically follow through the books, read, almost like read the read a chapter once a month do an iPod and then just build on that. So it's a great place to start. Um, particularly what was his surname? Um, I'll, I'll rugly on. It's a bit of an unusual surname, but I'll um, in a moment or two, I'll, I'll stick some stuff into the chat. And uh, I, I can't get on chat because I'm on a portal. <laughs> so mine doesn't go on to chat. So this is my email address. If you want to email me. Lovely. Um, Andy.glover yeah. at freshstreams.net. Thank you. Um, or, or just, you know, if, if you're really into the platform, you can, you can connect with me on the meeting hub, see how that works, because I could do it in, in, the, in the, if you connect with me, I'll send you some stuff through that if you're really into the platform, you want to have a go on it. But otherwise, send me an email and I'll reply. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, that's a pleasure. Andy, th thanks, for th thanks for reminding me of that, that quote about culture um, eating strategy for breakfast. I I've been trying for um, the time I've been here 
to actually get all of our leaders in into life groups and that that's been very difficult in itself and i can see uh, with with my interest in these huddles anyway that actually to do what you did and and to, and to have those those second meetings in a month i can see that that's that's a real way forward for us so thank you very much uh, for sharing that so i, I I have, I have some real hope after this afternoon that, that there is a, a way forward for us because we, we, we are committed, at least in terms of sharing about discipleship as a church. And we really want to grow as, as um, disciple-making disciples, but it's actually doing it. And I think that this, this is certainly a vehicle for helping us to do that. So thank you so much for, for sharing. And uh, I'll, I'll be in touch with you um, and perhaps join one of your your uh, your huddles myself would be great you'd be very welcome yeah just get in contact dave that'd be fine great thank you anybody else want to ask any other question or make any other comment any clarity needed sounds very exciting thank you thank you Alex. yeah i think it's very exciting um and yeah if i can have um, details of the materials I'm going to get reading and start implementing <laughs> I'd love to say I'd, I'd, I'd like to ask to replace one of your huddles but I think they're probably for ministers and I'm on on eldership um, but I'm really excited and going to get this going in our church thank you where are you Jessica um dear and Baptist church with Nigel Bailey um used okay. to be Chris Densham I don't know if yeah, you know them. Not, I, I don't know whether <laughs> I don't know I'm just letting the cat but Nigel's in one of my huddles is he? So he could do one for the elders, yeah, which yeah. would release me to do one for the deacons. Yeah, he could. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be something to talk about with him. Um, I will. <laughs> yeah, Nigel's um, been coming on the last six months on a huddle, so I know he's sort of exploring that. So Brilliant. I will have a chat with him. Thank you. Yeah. Don't tell him I told you, told you that. <laughs> <laughs> Although he might watch the recording, who knows? He might. He might well. <laughs> So Andy, would you teach this language stuff to the congregation, this stuff to the congregation as a whole, or are you yeah. just purely focusing on the leadership team? We, we, we do, we do both. Depend, you know, in the early days, we did a lot of of teaching, Sunday sermon series. Um, we did the Jesus shaped life as a series. Um, we're just about to start a new series called. We we have a little phrase in our church. That instead of talking about up in and out, we talk about be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and do what Jesus did. So we're going to do a bit of a teaching series around that. Again, just I think for me, it's it's always returning back. You know, it seems really simple, isn't it? But it's just keep going back to Jesus. <laughs> I know it's that whole thing, isn't it? Whatever the question, the answer is Jesus. <laughs> um, but actually, in terms of discipleship. You know, the Jesus shaped life um, and that book, particularly I, in lockdown, um, I made that uh, available to people to buy um, because it gives lots of tools. So the other, the other thing I could send you as well, if you email me, is that there's a new little handbook called. Um, oh, I think it's called like the, the, the toolbox for discipleship. And, and it gives you a whole number of tools to help people in their discipleship. And, and, and it's a really helpful little resource. Kairos Connection have put it together. Um, and it, I feel like right now, one of our jobs, particularly if we're in leadership, is to give people the tools to grow as disciples themselves. It's like this moment of not gathering in the same way. The Sunday gathering is, is sort of been taken away from us. But actually, everybody's got the chance to build church in their home. Um, and we need to give them the tools to do that. And uh, I think as Baptists, we're really well positioned for this because you know, we believe so passionately in the priesthood of all believers. So everybody has the ability to make somebody, you know, to disciple somebody. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, um, there's lots of material out there that you can draw on to teach the whole congregation. And I think right now... Um, this COVID moment for me is sort of really highlighting the priesthood of all believers that actually, you know, it feels like COVID and, you know, if you put it crudely, Satan said, I'm going to close the church. And God says, well, actually, I'm going to open a church in every home, actually. 
And it's that sort of thinking, isn't it? How do we equip people so that in their home they can disciple their kids or uh, begin to reach out to their little, their street and their community and um, build that level of, of equipping. So tools and rhythms are so important. And that's our focus right now as a church and how we do that with the whole congregation. Have you found having um, iPod and the structure in your church that people are less reluctant or more willing to step forward into leadership roles? Um, don't get me wrong, it's still a challenge to get people to go into leadership. Um, we, you know, I guess the context of our church is a little, so the rhythms of our church is a little bit different. We don't gather every Sunday as a church. Um, so usually... We would only gather on the first and third Sundays. On the second and fourth, we would do missional communities or missional expressions of church. Um, so some of our Sunday focused ministry isn't so intense uh, in the sense that we don't, you know, we don't need a worship team every Sunday, for example. Um, so it sort of frees up a little bit more space in people's lives. Um, we, we also... Um, have rhythm each each missional community chooses its own midweek rhythm so some meet every week some meet once a fortnight some don't meet at all um, it just depends on each missional community so we we try and look at the whole month so we, we talk about the monthly rhythm as a church um, to help particularly leaders manage their lives and their rhythms so nobody is over committed um, but yeah, there is still a challenge. To be fair, we need we always need more leaders than what we have. So don't don't get me wrong. We haven't got it sussed just yet. But it, I think our our overall rhythm means that you know for a church of the size we are, we have probably yeah maybe I can say maybe 40, 45 people in a in an iPod, um, which feels a good percentage of people being discipled into the language and the context and the culture. Um, for what they're then going out to do in their areas of, of leadership. Guys, I, I'm really conscious that uh, the hour is up. It's half past four. Um, I, I, I'm happy to hang around for a little bit longer and, and I'll turn the recording off and I'll just hang on for another 10 minutes or so if everybody wants to stay on the call. Um, but I'm just conscious I'm going to finish the meeting now officially. Um, I'd love just to take a moment to pray for you all, um, uh, particularly in this context, but also just for these next few days as you in continue to engage with all the material and everything that's going on with the Fresh Dreams Conference. Uh, I really pray and hope it's a real blessing to you uh, to be a part of this. So um, let's just take a moment uh, just to pray uh, together. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much um, for every person who's sat on a screen right now, who, who've made the effort and the time to engage um, in this particular Digging Deeper seminar, but also just within the wider context of these days as we put on this Fresh Streams conference. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just help people to take away one thing from this conversation. And maybe that's the thing I'd ask you just to think and ponder. Is there one thing that you just feel highlighted from all that you've heard, all that we've talked about? Is there one thing that God is just laying on your heart? It's just resonating within you that you'll take away and do something with. Um, and I pray, Lord, that as we journey together um, and seek to find these environments where we can help make disciples who make disciples, that you would bless every person, that you would empower and equip each of us, Lord, to serve you and to serve your church. So we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thanks for making the time. Um, blessings on the rest of your day. Thanks so much.